now military calls anomalous human capabilities. Uh, we sh- that's our birthright. That's who we are as human beings. We let go of our belief systems in the right way to capture some of that. Uh, we can be a lot more powerful as human beings individually. And I think that's... Absolutely. And that's where I think the real solution ultimately lies in all this. Uh, not in the generation of fear, but in the generation of recognition that these things are going on, yet we are not helpless, um, but we do need to do some work. And so at all levels, a lot of people are doing that, I think, um, and I think it's important uh, to continue to push that envelope in the right ways, both politically uh, and internally uh, with, with who we are. And in all of the bad news, uh, I think anyone who has been around very long, uh, the most we ever learn is in the bad news, unfortunately. <laughs> it's sort of human nature. The bad news is it gets us awake and aware and, and maybe moves us along a, a better path. And that's, and that's what I would say is, is the best opportunity. The other is recognize you don't need some group to do it. You know, I mean, uh, doing anything, doing something that people believe in to be right and true and acting on that is the powerful aspect of human nature. And we all have a sphere of influence. We all have an issue important to us. Uh, Doing something about it on a regular, planned, and periodic basis is what's relevant. Not looking for a group to do it for you. Um, There's a lot of things we can do individually, and others are oriented that way, and that's good too. But um, do something. And, And that's, I think, the ultimate challenge for all of us is to act on, and that's the act of faith, uh, in my view, is acting on what we know to be right and true uh, and trying to do a little something, whether it's talking to your neighbor, writing a letter to the editor, uh, calling a congressman, or changing some aspect of your own behavior that might contribute to a better good. And that's it. That's as simple as it gets. And that's all we're ever asked to do, I think, in this life. What are your days like in the day-to-day now? Oh, uh, you know, I'm busy. I do a lot of different things. So, you know, I'm involved, of course, I continue to do radio on the topics that interest me and independent research, but you know, I work with tribal uh, governments here and uh, as a consultant on a number of projects recently, mostly in the energy areas, which has been you know, y- uniquely uh, educational for me on a lot of fronts, and then it's, there are issues I'm, I'm concerned about on, on others. So you know, I continue to do that work and following sort of following the economic trends and issues. We spend a lot more time on that these days. Do you think that there will ever be legislation attempting to stop the use of HARP technology? Well, in Europe, that stuff is moving forward, and there's people seriously taking it on in terms of treaty dialogue. So there's, you know, at at a level, there's discussion happening now that will continue to happen um, because the story won't go away, and the information is out there, and there's enough documentation where denials don't work so much anymore in those circles. As so, uh, so I think eventually we'll see that. Uh, I think as long as people continue to raise these kinds of issues, uh, we'll see progress in, in, a, in, a, in a different direction. And ultimately, the thing about science today, and, the, and has always been true, uh, the most profound of invention doesn't come out of academic military complex. Uh, it comes out of uh, some guy in a closet you know, <laughs> with a handful of tools. And I think that's, again, uh, in this uh, century, we're going to see the same kinds of breakthroughs. And don't expect them from the standard normal places. And then what we do with those and how they're presented um, and how they move into you know this reality will be very interesting. And, and well, think about alternate energy. That's ultimately where the action is, is once something is discovered or created, it's the entire business of bringing it into the world, which has its legal communication, whether you're in the radar, over the radar, how you protect the pioneers and the inventors while the process is going on, how you bring it to the world so it's not obstructed and defiled and stopped before it can get to the people it can contribute to. That's the business I've been in for 25 years. And yeah, I'm- and I think there's a lot of ways you know, to do it. It's going to take a different kind of thinking, and I, and I think that's going to happen. Um, but it's also going to take uh, the stripping away of a whole lot of old institutions uh, to change the way uh, things are rolling. And I think in the sort of the things we have yet to face, and people think they've been through some rough times, I, th- I think what we will see in the future is going to be uh, even more difficult. But... Uh, having said that, uh, the, the opportunities with what man knows and the resources that we have, uh, we don't have to settle for that. And, and I think that's what's missed in a lot of a lot of discussions. Why we've been focusing a lot on 
uh, some of the economic issues, things that generate fear, and yeah. saying, hey, look, let's look at it a little differently. Um, and technologies are the same. I mean, you think about the technologies and the things that they have uh, have changed for us, but sort of reorienting them a little bit differently um, and creating less dependencies. Because, see, uh, modern economic models for businesses are to create dependencies, so you keep coming back to buy some more. Uh, not the opposite. And this is a big change that has to take place as well. It's how we look at the making of money, you know, in terms of capitalism. And, and I think capitalism is a good thing, but totally unrestrained. You get things like what you get in Russia <laughs> when they don't know what's going on, or China. Uh, and there's huge abuses that are, and have a high price to pay for um, a renegade system. And what we need is one that has a platform of values Capitalism, can you put some values on top of capitalism, make it work a lot more effectively? Um, but changing the model to one of how do we create the greatest level of independence? Now, that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. Just from the standpoint of energy alone. You know, if you had an independent source of your power and your heat, in my part of the world, uh, and I'm not in a house that's more than a couple of thousand square feet, it's $1,000 a month for energy. Well, that justifies a big amount of money I could spend on an alternative. And most people, when they start adding up, you know, what they spend on alternatives, as they advance and become more and more um, feasible economically, energy should be going the opposite direction. It should be getting cheaper. Exactly. Not more expensive. And this is, um, again, and, and to get more and more and higher and higher degrees of independence where you need to use less of it from someone else. You know, we used to be independent people. You know, Americans and people around the world used to be able to grow your own food, build your own house, make your own way, and even become a lawyer by reading just a couple of books instead of two floors of them. Uh, you know, and the, the thing that we've done is made some things that are should be simplified, very complex, created uh, not independent systems that build the strength of who we individually are, but just the opposite. And that's where we've missed the boat because in, you know, if we look at sort of the, the system that's evolved, it started out with the right ideals, but there weren't enough checks and balances. And in a modern society where technology drives so much of those checks and balances, they're not there. And in terms of just personal privacy, you used to think about it, you know, people couldn't come in your home, they couldn't come through your doorway. Well, it's not your home anymore. It's your digital doorway uh, where your privacy is either lost or gained. Uh, and, and, you know, who owns your information about you? I say you do. I say you do. And your medical information. <laughs> Absolutely. All your information, your credit card charges, your bank statements, your buying patterns, all that belongs to us. We need a reform of privacy to reflect the digital doorway. All of that information should be absolutely destroyed every six months unless you authorize it to be extended. You know, or it's a, a settled lawsuit decision. You know, but the basic information about you as you develop it, your buying patterns, that kind of thing, your your phone calls and who you call, when you call, where you call, after they're done billing and the period for disputing the bill has expired, the data should go away. And it doesn't. It's retained because it's valuable. It's sold and traded like meat in the market. And it's um, no different than someone kicking in your doorway and going through your paperwork. And we just need to think about it differently. And that's where... Again, pol politics matters because and congressmen understand matters. that. I mean, that's obvious. Say that again. I think it matters. Politics matters because when you start talking about personal privacy and what happens when it's abused, you know, the leadership uh, can recognize the basics of it. But again, when, when you're the abuser, when government uh, has created systems that actually exploit our own vulnerability, and take advantage of a lack of privacy. You know, having data allows you the ability, and this was a big issue for us in Europe, and we, we dealt with it in Earth Rising, the Revolution, and its follow-on, Earth Rising 2, was personal privacy-related technologies, as they've advanced, you have no perception, presumption of privacy anywhere, anytime, anymore, uh, because of the state of technology today and the state of the law that allows for it to be abused. Did you know that there were two executive orders signed by George Bush Jr. before he left office about next generation communication that's hovering over America? Yeah, I can believe that. And there's a lot of unsealed 
uh, presidential orders, and Obama's administration has not done enough, in my opinion.